was looking for a car to buy for my son for his 18th birthday. I was searching all the typical car websites, cars.com, eBay Motors. They were all overpriced as expected. Craigslist was the only place to find an actual deal. About a week into my search, I found an 03 Toyota Camry. It had 67,000 miles, no accidents, no damage, and good condition for only $3,500. This seemed like a steal for such a reliable car with such low mileage. The seller lived about 10 miles from me, which was a reasonable drive when looking for a car. I gave him a call to set up a time to come check it out. The man sounded normal on the phone. He assured me there were absolutely no problems with the car. He introduced himself as Bob. I brought along 3500 in cash, even though I planned on wiggling down the price as much as possible. I pulled up the dirt road to Bob's property about 15 minutes early. It was a tiny little house with a decent sized property, only because it was a bit far from the nearest neighbors. The garage was open, so I looked over to see if anyone was inside, but except for an unusual amount of car parts, it was empty. The car was nowhere in sight. The only car on the property was an old pickup truck. I went over to the front door to check the house numbers. It was the right address. The doorbell button was missing, so I knocked on the front door. I knocked every once in a while for exactly five minutes before deciding to give the man a call. So I dialed his number, and I heard the sound of his phone ringing from inside the house. I was extremely confused at this point. Now I knew I had the right house. I didn't understand why if he was home, why he wasn't answering. I decided I had to take a peek through one of the windows to see if anyone was inside. Peering through the glass, I couldn't really see much as it was pretty dark inside the house. I saw a very old-fashioned dining room set, but across from that, I saw somebody standing at the back door of the house, staring outside. I figured that must have been Bob, so I knocked on the window, but he didn't even move. There was no gate or anything to the backyard. It was just a wide open yard since this wasn't a rural area. I simply walked around the house to the backyard. I didn't understand how he couldn't hear me. When I got to the back door, I made a shocking realization. The figure standing by the door was a taxidermied human being. I ran straight back the way I came and back to my car. I looked up one last time before driving off. The blinds to the window I had peeked into had been shut, but I could see two of the blinds creased open. Somebody was at that window, watching me. You could probably guess I had the gas pedal to the floor the whole way home. The whole situation still makes no sense. All the car parts, the fact that there was no Toyota Camry, the taxidermied human being. Given that there was no car there, leads me to believe that whoever that man was, wasn't planning on selling me anything. And that also leads me to the disturbing thought that I was very close to becoming a lifeless statue staring out that man's back door. This happened when I was really little and often left alone with my single mom. She always came to check on me every night when she would get up to go to the bathroom. This one night in particular, I remember waking up thinking I heard something in my closet. I looked up and my mom was at the foot of my bed giving me a playful wave. She told me to go back to sleep. She then went into my closet and pulled the door until it was just barely open and she just stood in there poking her head through the crack of the barely open closet. I remember vividly seeing her eye peeking through the crack at me. I laughed like any little kid would do in that situation, and then fell asleep moments later. When I was eating cereal the next morning, I asked my mom why she was hiding in my closet last night, and she just stopped and gave me a puzzled and concerned look. She told me she hadn't been in the room all night. At first she assumed somebody had broken into the house, but she soon realized it was some kind of hallucination or dream. Since this experience, I've only had two other hallucinations, neither of them as vivid or as creepy as this one. In the year 2009, I was spending a weekend with my uncle on his ranch when my parents were renovating the new house we had just bought. It was my second night there, a Saturday, and it happened to be during one of the biggest thunderstorms of the year. I'd say there were at least three crashes of thunder and lightning per minute, 
and we were in the heart of the storm because the thunder would crash not even a second after the lightning would. I always enjoyed listening to storms while laying in bed, so I stayed up a little later watching TV, just enjoying the ambiance. After the movie I was watching finally ended, I turned off the TV and tried to fall asleep. As I heard the lightning strike from outside, I could have sworn I heard some kind of metallic thud coming from outside at the same time. I didn't pay it too much mind. 20 seconds later, I could have sworn I heard it again. A very distinct metallic thud coming from outside to match the timing of the lightning. I really don't mean to make this sound like a cliche horror story, but my uncle really is a kind of creepy guy and I was never close with him even remotely. So for that reason, I didn't feel right going to wake him up. I just tried to forget about it. Now I was getting concerned. What the hell could that be? After the third time, I finally got out of bed and walked over to the window of the guest bedroom. The water pouring down on the window made it extra hard to see what was out there in the dark fields. A flash of lightning momentarily lit up the property, but I couldn't see anything. However, once again, the sound of a metal hit accompanied it. The sound was so close now, it sounded like it was coming from the left of the window at a blind spot. I was going to do something I knew my uncle wouldn't be happy about. It would be a bit messy, but I was going to open the window and peer outside to see if I could see what the sound was. I unhooked the window lock and slid it up, and immediately the wind of the storm blew drops of rain into the room and onto me. I stuck my head out the window and looked to the left, and at that very moment, lightning lit up the property once again, and I could see a person dressed in all black crouched down by the outside basement door with his hand raised in the air. And before the sky went dark, I caught the briefest glimpse of what the sound was coming from. The person was bashing at the basement door lock. I pulled my head in and quietly shut the window, making sure to lock it. I was in a panic. I feared he might have seen or heard me. I ran back to bed and pretended to be asleep, facing away from the window. Lightning crashed once again, but this time there was no metallic thud. My heart must have dropped as I realized this. I just stayed put in bed for the longest time, hoping whoever was out there would go away. After maybe three more lightning crashes without any thuds accompanying them, I thought it would be safe to go tell my uncle. I turned to face the window and screamed. There was a figure, clear as day, standing at the window, looking in at me. I screamed as loud as I could and ran straight to my uncle's room. He went outside with his hunting rifle with nothing on but his pajamas, not even socks. He ran around the entire property yelling like a madman, but didn't find anyone. The next morning, we were able to better see the marks on the basement door lock. It was almost bashed open. Maybe three or four more good hits would have done it, according to my uncle. He was proud of me for picking up on it. Luckily, I was out of there that same day. My uncle hasn't told us of any incidents since, so I think he's been okay. Not that we talk to him much at all. I'm grateful I stayed up a little later that night watching that movie because I may have just stopped a robbery, or possibly much worse. I don't care if anyone judges me, but I like to go to the movie theaters alone. My work schedule is all over the place, I often don't work weeknights. So on a stormy Wednesday night, a night not many other people would be thinking to go drive to a movie theater, I did just that. I always like avoiding crowds in anything I do, that's just how I am. It was 2017, I went to see some low-key movie that probably wasn't at the top of most people's must-see movie lists. I was the only one in the theater just like I expected. I sat myself right in the center seat of one of the higher up rows and put my feet up on the seat in front of me. About 20 minutes into the movie, I'd say, I noticed someone a few aisles down. I didn't notice them coming in. The theater was dark because the scene in the movie at the time was in a dark room. They weren't sitting in a seat like a normal person though. All I saw of them was the top half of their head, peering over one of the seats to be looking in a direction that definitely was not the screen. It was still too dark to be able to tell if they were looking directly at me or not, but when the scene changed to a brighter background, the whole theater got brighter. 
bright enough to see they were looking basically at me. But their face was so pale and lifeless looking, and their hair messy and wiry looking, I couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. I'm an introvert, or just an awkward person, so I didn't really want to ask if there was something wrong. I viewed that as confrontation. The screen went darker again, and at the same time, the person lowered down behind the chair completely until I couldn't see them anymore. They were completely hidden from my view. I couldn't concentrate on the movie now though. I was actually very uncomfortable. Actually quite terrified. I didn't get up though, I stayed put in my seat. Many scenes in the movie passed, I almost forgot about what happened. Almost. Just when I was getting back into the movie, the person's head appeared from behind a seat again, this time much closer, only like three rows of seats away from me. I actually let out a holy shit and a loud yell because it genuinely made me jump. Now I was able to see more detail or features in their face. They actually looked lifeless, their eyes motionless, hung open. But still, I somehow couldn't tell if they were looking directly at me or not. Now I could better see it was a man with long, unkept hair. I noped the F out of my seat and down the road to the exit. I had to pass the row in which the person was in to get to the exit door. As I passed the row, I looked down it, and while I expected to see the rest of the person's body sitting hunched behind the seats, instead what I saw was something you'd see in a nightmare. There was some guy basically laying on the floor, holding up a severed head perched on a stick. I didn't stick around to see if it was some sick joke or if the head was real or not. I ran for it through the exit door, and I ran out of the back exit of the building to the parking lot. I drove home in a panic, heart racing. That head looked so real. I got home and did some research about possible recent murders or missing people in the area, and I found something. After browsing a list of missing people in the area, I found the picture of a 17-year-old boy named Donald Watkins who had gone missing a month prior, and based on the picture I found, his face could have matched the head I saw in that theater. Of course, that could be my brain trying to connect any similarities, but the hair, the nose, the eyes, they looked like they could actually be a match. The next day, I simply made a call to the theater and told them the story and suggested they check their cameras and see if anything strange came up. I gave them my number to reach me if they needed to, but I never heard from them. I chose to not spend any more of my time on it. A long time ago, I very briefly lived with my good friend Ben on a quiet street in Northville, Michigan perhaps notable for being close to Detroit. It wasn't the nicest house, or block, or area for that matter, but the price was unbeatable for two broke young men like ourselves. Ben and I went way back to when we were like nine years old, and at the time of this story, we worked the same job, and rooming together with him seemed like a great idea. On our first day there, we quickly figured out that the creepy looking house across the street with the overgrown grass and bushes was abandoned, as were a lot of the houses around the area. In fact, something we somehow hadn't noticed before, there was even graffiti next to one of the front windows and on the fence. Our neighbors on one side seemed like creeps, and we didn't even want to approach them. The neighbor on the other side was an older dude, a very interesting, hippie-ish kind of guy. His name was Marv. He had long gray hair with a matching long gray beard. He seemed friendly at first, I guess, but also very weird and hard to talk to. We spoke with him on our second day there after work. He told us the place had been abandoned for as long as he could remember. That night, with the sun almost set, while we were sitting on the front stoop smoking, I looked to the house across the street and felt a little tingle in my stomach out of shock. I stood up, threw my cigarette onto the floor and crushed it. Ben looked at me confused and I pointed to the window across the street. I was pointing at a face which I saw staring at me through the lone upstairs window of the house. Do you see that? There's someone at that window. Ben looked at the window immediately, but I saw the person move their head away before he could see it. It's weird, I explained to Ben that I didn't even know if it was a male or female, old or young. The glass was just too foggy. All I knew was that I saw the eyes, and they were staring at us. Ben told me I was legitimately creeping him out. He believed me. 
We ran over to Marv's house to tell him, but strangely he didn't answer his door, even though we saw him watching TV in his tiny, messy living room through the window. The fact that the guy wouldn't answer creeped us out even more. Dude, what the fuck is going on with this place? Ben left, but the situation couldn't stay comical for long. Ben owned a katana, he brought it to mention, and suggested we go across the street with it, break into the house from the backyard, and see what was going on. We were always adventurous, daring troublemakers as kids, so this was our natural response to the situation. When it got dark, we went across the street to the backyard, broke off the board holding the back door shut, and entered the house. We both had heavy-duty flashlights with us to light up basically any room we were in. The house was dusty, decrepit, but surprisingly seemed to remain untouched from the inside. No graffiti or signs of vandalism anywhere. Still, the place was disturbingly creepy, and we immediately joked that we should get the fuck out of there, but we pressed on. The first floor was pathetically small like our own, a kitchen, a tiny living room, and a dining room. There was no basement and one closet. The first floor was clear. We both agreed to check the upstairs. We tiptoed over to the stairs, and Ben, out of nowhere, screamed, Is anybody up there? Dude, why the fuck would you do that? I said quietly. Then we both froze in fear when we heard rapid stomping suddenly appear from above us. It was someone heavy, and it sounded like they were running over to the stairway. I literally felt like my heart stopped. Ben, the one with the katana, was the first to flee, grabbing my arm and tugging me with him. We went out the way we entered and ran back to the house, where we saw Marv just standing by his window, watching us. We didn't know what to do, he just intently stared at us as we froze to catch our breath in front of the house. We went inside, decided not to call the police, and moved out literally the next day. We explained to the landlord that the location was just too inconvenient for us and we needed to leave ASAP. We drove away from that house and never looked back. For my son's 12th birthday, my wife and I threw him a little party in the backyard. We invited the whole family as we usually did for any of our kids' birthdays and let him invite all of his friends too. We live in rural New Jersey, so our backyard connects to forest on two sides. We also have a pretty big property, which allowed us to space out a bunch of tables on the grass with food and refreshments. The little party went into the night. Most of our guests left, but closer family and some of our friends stayed late. It was probably 8 o'clock, the mosquitoes were out in full force, so I decided to run over to the shed at the far end of the backyard by the woods to fetch the tiki torches. I grabbed like six torches and set them on the grass while I went back in to look for fuel. However, while I was in the shed, I heard steps in the woods. I stopped what I was doing to take a look out there, but honestly it was just too dark to see out into the woods. After finding the fuel, I went back to the part of the yard everyone else was at and pitched the torches into the ground. The six torches gave off a decent amount of light while keeping us safe from the blood-sucking pests. There were about six kids left, including my son, and they all wanted to play hide-and-seek in the woods. My wife and I allowed it, just making sure to tell them to stay close to the tree line. My son and his friends went to play their little game in the woods, which left the rest of us to sit in peace for a little bit. It was a solid 15 minutes of talking with relatives and hearing the kids laughing and yelling in the near distance out in the woods. But all of a sudden, the yelling turned to screams, concerning sounding screams from the kids. All of us looked at each other, sitting up in concern. The kids one by one came running out of the woods, yelling that there's something in there. We don't have bears or any big predatory animals around here, so that was not the first thing we assumed it to be. I told all the kids to stay near the patio area. My brother Dom and I, being the biggest men there, decided to go investigate. We took a couple flashlights and off we went into the pitch black woods. The only sounds we heard around us were crickets and other night bugs. So we went deeper. And that's when we started to hear something else. It sounded like an animal at first, but as we followed the sound to get closer, the sound started to become more human-like. We continued to walk, and we agreed we both had the feeling that we were being watched. Like, stalked. I put my arm out to stop Dom. Standing in the silence now, 
The best way I could describe the sound we were hearing was a moaning, angry kind of sound. It sounded human, but it was a bizarre sound. Then, a few cracks of the leaves on the ground ahead of us. We aimed our lights over there, and there was someone or something behind the tree. The moaning sound stopped. Tom stepped forward and called out. What happened next was textbook horror movie stuff. A scream, so loud, so blood curdling, so inhuman, filled the air. I'm sure it could be heard for miles. Dom and I turned and booked it back to the property. We waved at everyone to go inside when we made it back. Dom got on the phone with the sheriff's department. They said it was probably a wild animal. We wanted to insist it was a human, but we honestly couldn't. We to this day don't know who or what we saw and heard in those woods, but it was definitely stalking us and the kids when they were playing hide and seek. And that scream we heard, it just didn't sound human to us. <laughs> 